this, you can see it has a sticker. So this is the backside, less toothy. And this is the front, which has just a little bit more texture. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a really subtle. Uh, the good news is that if you mess this up and you use the wrong side, it doesn't matter that much because there's enough tooth on both sides to actually hold the drawing. So I'm going to carefully uh, remove the sticker. The paper is called Strathmore. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, it's one of my very favorite papers. So two here, there it is. I uh, have to close my eyes when I do that because the, the texture is so subtle that if I'm even looking, it just distracts me enough that I can't feel the texture. So I'm gonna put a piece of, piece of uh, tape at the top. If you're working smaller or if you have a lot of tape, you could opt to draw, or you could, you could opt to tape around the entire edge and it will give you that really nice clean border when you're finished. Um, I don't always do that. It gets to be a stylistic choice. If you're a messy drawer though, it is nice and it kind of gives you a finished frame of sorts. So there you go. Um, my drawing is probably going to end someplace around here. And so I can use this bottom portion of the, of the um, paper to show you something. Um, I wanted to show you basically what happened. So this is the 6B charcoal pencil. I'll use this to outline and sketch uh, the very basic shapes and uh, I will then block in some of the structural forms and the, the very basic values to help give it that sort of uh, blocky structural feel. And then, um, and then I will overlay pastel. And so here are two pastels that uh, most of you have. Uh, one of them is white and one of them is black. They're both Rembrandt brand. Rembrandt's a really great uh, professional grade pastel. It's sort of like middle of the road in terms of, it's probably better than middle of the road in terms of quality. Um, it's, it's softer, but not as soft as some pastels are made. Some are just very, very like buttery. Other pastels are known as hard pastels and they're like more like, they're similar to like a Conte crayon. Um, but let me just show you something about pastel. You never need to erase with pastel ever. Uh, it is more like paint than it is uh, like charcoal. So for example, I can put down black. Here's a little mark of black and, uh, if I don't like it there, instead of taking an eraser and trying to erase it, which would just smear it all over the place because it's very thick, um, I could just go right over it with the white. And so you can see how white covers black without any trouble. And the opposite's true as well. So if that's white, I can cover that up with black easily enough. Um, very, very friendly. Uh, another important thing for you to understand is that uh, all of the grays that you are going to use to describe the values that are in the still life are going to be manually made by mixing the black and the white together. And uh, most everywhere, you're going to be mixing both black and white. And uh, I like to do uh, hatching in one direction and then cross hatching in the other direction. And you can see how it starts to make a gray. Now, the more pastel you have on the page, the easier it is to blend. And this is a Pastel is really known as this wonderful blending material, like this medium that everything sort of can feather together in, in, in a really beautiful way. And so don't be afraid to keep piling it up. Some people will, um, they will actually try to shade like this. And you can see how the lines are more spaced out than what I was doing over here. And so the problem with that is, it's also, it's both a problem and it's also like a benefit. Uh, the problem with it though, is that uh, if I were to go ahead and cross over that with the white, you can see how you can still see the black lines underneath. They just don't ever really go away. Not easily anyway. The best way to make uh, sort of a cohesive value, like a sort of solid tone, is to keep your lines close together while you're hatching. Also, there's differences in pressure. So watch, I can push down really hard here and then I can lighten it up. You can see how there's like a, a difference in the way that this is trailing, like a comet. That's really thick. There's actually, it's raised off the paper just a little bit, probably about uh, a 30 seconds of an inch or so. And um, uh, so the reason I say that is because while you're drawing, you should practice, look at how light this is. It's like the, it's like the Say I project where sometimes you can make light values just by repeatedly passing over the same area. I'm not pressing any harder. It's just that, you know, one, one pass is this dark, a second pass is, this dark, you know, a third pass just keeps getting more and more and more dense and opaque. Um, so you should practice building up values in a little bit more of a slow manner 
Um, you can also press harder when you need to, but uh, there is a point where you can oversaturate the paper. This paper isn't so toothy that you can just keep building and building and building. Uh, it will at some point, and you probably won't get there very quickly. Um, but there is a point where it would be so thick that you might have to actually like rub off a little bit of it in order to get more marks to stick again. So anyway, uh, that's a very basic about the pastels. Again, a black and a white and a charcoal pencil and your gray paper is what you use to start. Um, one last little thing actually. Uh, you can notice how I always put this on top of a sketch pad, uh, a piece of cardboard behind it or a few extra pieces of like paper, even um, you know old uh, butcher paper, anything that has like a little bit of cushion um, because sometimes pastels and, and charcoals too have a, a, the ability to, they burnish a little bit, which means that if they're too hard and the backing of this is too hard, they, they will like polish the surface of the paper instead of like depositing it, it just makes it really shiny. And then the pastel won't stick because it's like glossy there. And you'll see that when you look at it from, you know, from the side with, a, with, an, with an angle, you won't get that really so much with the black and white pastel but you'll probably all be taking drawing two with me. And we uh, take this lesson into drawing two eventually where we use a full color set of pastels. And so I happen to have a red right here and red is one of the colors that does that burnishing thing a lot. And so uh, just getting yourself into the good habit of setting up um, a cushion underneath your paper will help prevent that burnishing effect. Something that I like to do right off the bat, just to help me kind of keep track of things, is I might, I might just go ahead and uh, put a few dabs, some lights, wherever I see them, highlights, for example, in a few key places. Um, I'm also um, not against maybe even blocking in some very basic lights right off the bat, so you can kind of, you can kind of get a sense of the way the light is actually working. Um, because my original drawing is somewhat quick, um, it still has some structural uh, issues inside there that I haven't completely figured out. Um, like I know this thing down here probably needs to be shifted a little bit. Well, the good news is I can just go ahead and do that in my pastels. And um, you'll notice that I will be shifting some things a little bit here and there as I start blocking in lights and darks. So, so but just a little bit of light in here and one of the nice things about this particular stage is that you know when you're doing the outline drawing you know you're thinking about you're thinking about the still life in a particular way and once you start to block in lights and darks like this all of a sudden you'll start seeing negative shapes and such that maybe you didn't quite pay close enough attention to and um, you'll catch you'll catch little um, proportional errors if they're important to you or not you know um, but you'll be able to adjust and change. Like I'm looking at this shape more carefully right here now. I'm thinking maybe this needs to be down a little further. And so that's what I do. I just start kind of blocking in some of these very basic lights, looking carefully at the, the shapes that are in these areas. At the same time, um, I can go ahead and take my black and uh, establish where I actually truly see black. So for me, the only places I really see pure black, that really super dark, are in some of these shadows at the bottoms of the objects. So the objects cast these long shadows that you're seeing up there. In most places, there's a little bit of bounced ambient light from the room that's able to fill in some of these places, but that kind of like bounced light isn't so it's not able to get underneath the objects completely, and so you end up with these very, very dark shadows that uh, form right in those places. So this is also very dark in here, which is kind of nice little cavernous shadow. Like it. Um, some things to keep in mind with your ellipse drawings 
is that remember they need to be symmetrical from top to bottom and from left to right. And so uh, you might have noticed that I was like taking and dividing them in half and making sure that that the lowest part was in the middle and the highest part, you know, even if I can't see it, it has to be in the middle and the, the, light, the left side has to be directly across from the right side, at least in this situation where the um, where these objects are sitting flat on a, on a horizontal surface. You know, if that surface wasn't horizontal, it might be different, but uh, and then the ellipse would be tilted, the ellipses would be tilted. So, okay, so next stage is I'm gonna go ahead probably and start um, blocking in some lights and darks. So how about I just go ahead and start that over here. And by the way, if I blur my vision, everything in here is so much darker than I've already represented it. So um, I, I feel like I can just go ahead just uh, fill this in a little darker and um, you will find your own way with these pastels like how you like how you like to make a mark you know do you like to be uh, more organized like are you someone who's gonna be very very precise with the way that you're hatching or are you someone who's gonna be a little bit more scribbly like I am or even scribblier than that so the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, and I blur my vision again, and I see, yeah, that looks a little bit closer to what I've seen before. And actually, I should just go ahead and continue that thinking all the way up, because I do see it all as being darker. And I always come back in and carve out other stuff. It's like painting like that. In fact, some people call this pastel painting. They don't call it pastel drawing. You still see those little like highlights back there. Okay, so um, I ultimately want this stuff to be very like blendable and um, I don't see pure black everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna add a layer of this white so that I can get it so that it's a little bit thicker on my paper. I can do that everywhere. And I'll just go back in and I'll add more black if I need to. It looks like I've, you gotta be careful. Sometimes you need to we use this one. You have to sometimes peel these pastels so you're not just running up against the paper. That's, that's a little bit better. This one's broken, looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in again and add a little bit more black. And so it almost seems counterintuitive that you're like darkening things to lighten them and you're lightening things to darken them. But really what we're trying to do is make a gray and you need both black and white to do that. I mean, unless you're using the paper as like uh, something you're mixing into it. You know, like in other words, like there's a the paper is lighter, so I can go like, like this, this area here has less pastel on, so it's like you're mixing the paper a little bit with this optically. Um, but still, that doesn't blend and, and smear as easily as maybe we wanted to, so, so it's a little something different. And uh, don't, don't be afraid. Pastel is one of the most forgiving mediums you're gonna, you're gonna come across. And so uh, don't be shy about darkening and lightening. There's a metallic band that floats around here someplace. And I don't actually see it as like just one solid band like that. I see little spotches, like splots of, of value, but um, okay. What else, I'm gonna thicken this up a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna go ahead and just by the way, maybe if you want, if you're, you could also use your charcoal pencil, or if you have a white charcoal pencil, those work too. You can sometimes hatch and cross hatch with those as well as the pastels, especially if you're a little bit more heavy handed and you can't quite get the pastel to do what you want. So I need to probably find my lightest light. Maybe that's gonna be over there in those highlights. Let me go ahead and block in some of this quickly too. I blur my vision and all of this is darker also. Believe it or not, um, I don't see it so easily unless I kind of squint my eyes, meaning like I'm, I'm kind of closing them slowly and looking through my eyelashes almost even, and everything gets really blurry and everything is reduced into some very basic shapes uh, that are values. And so like when I do that, I see this is all one big dark shape of this jug. That's important because there's a figure ground relationship there. This is darker, the background is lighter. And uh, 
when we just start looking at details and we see the glowing stuff in here and the highlights here, all of a sudden there's another little twinkle there. All of a sudden we can lose that essential figure ground separation. And then it's very hard for people to sort of sometimes pick up the form. Not, not that it's always so clear even in the object, but, uh, but blurring your vision helps you see that. Uh, an object that maybe is less solid in terms of figure ground separation would be this candlestick holder, which is uh, when I blur my vision there, I see that it kind of blends in, leads into this sugar uh, jar a little bit. And uh, there's some darker shadows down here. And then there's a lot of darkness in the background here. Uh, and then, so I guess it's, it's a little bit more, like it's figure ground relationship is a little bit more perceptual. It's like a step more perceptual than, than something that's just this dark thing on a, on a light background because this is like lighter than it is here, but it's darker than it is there. And it's lighter than it is here and it's darker than it is. There. And, and so like our mind is sort of like assembling all those little bits and pieces. So, so uh, anyway. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and uh, start blocking in some things again. Actually, I'm gonna keep going a little bit more on this because I feel like I probably do need to get this, this situated over here. There's this highlight that I just wanna set up quickly. It is, uh, by the way, there are times when you're just like, you can't get your dark, your black, black enough. And you can't get your white, white enough. And most of the time, it's not that this isn't white enough, it's that you don't have um, the stuff around it the right value, because like, there's this thing called simultaneous contrast, right? Where things can push things, like they can make things feel more extreme. You put its opposite next to it or something else, put, put a neighboring color next to it, it will influence it. And so darkening this will help that feel like it's lighter. I'm just gonna go ahead and do something real quick. I'm gonna smudge that just a little bit. And by the way, when I, when I blend with my finger, uh, it's important that you understand that I'm not grinding the pastel off the page. I'm trying to keep it as thick as I can. Sometimes I'm just dusting the surface. And so when I actually build these up with layers, as opposed to just one layer and trying to smudge it, um, I, I can actually, I can blend it more gently and do some really cool things with it. And I'm not gonna finish the highlight just yet, but I just I wanna kinda like set it up a little bit. There are a couple other little twinkles and stuff that are in there that I can address later. Let me go ahead and get a little bit of this value set up. Um, it is messy. This is a messy technique, so you want to make sure that you're in the right, you're in the right space to do this. So this might be an outside drawing if you don't have, um, you know, like a garage to work in, or if you don't have uh, something to protect your floors with. The stuff will mop up. I mean, you're gonna have a hard time getting out of carpet for maybe, but but it'll mop up really easily off of uh, like a linoleum usually. But you don't want to put yourself in that situation, and uh, you'll really make your uh, Make your parents mad if you just make a big dust cloud and you get this black and white soot everywhere in their kitchen or in their living room. That's even worse. At least the kitchen floor can be mopped. So um, I'm seeing that there's a darker footprint in there. And uh, I'll get in there and I'll start separating more. So really what I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing with my eyes blurred. So because again, once you blur your vision, you'll start noticing that there are just these... Um, Really great light and dark separations that happen. And that's all I'm trying to like express right now. And uh, it's just a little bit different way of looking at stuff. I probably need to darken some other stuff like the shadow. Some people like to shade and hatch in the direction of the forms and that's that works great. I tend to like, um, I, like my, I like my marks to be less descriptive of the form usually and a little bit more just I use them as compositional things. Like if I want to try and bring the eye over this way, I'll use a line to go that way. Or, um, and it gets to be personal choice and you can pick and choose when and where you want to use the different different aspects of hatching and line work. But um, I'll probably not draw, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this longer, but I might just switch over at some point now. Now that you've seen how I'm kind of making some grays, I might switch over to the time lapse to finish this drawing so that you're not like a prisoner to watching this slow progression. Um, I will say charcoal pencils can be really good friend though. Like they can be these things that you can say, I want to darken that a little bit, or if I even want to blend it a little bit, I can just use my charcoal pencil to kind of go over a little bit and soften some things. Um, one other little trick that you should be aware of is that not only do you have 
a sort of range of lights and darks, meaning like we've got something that's white here. By the way, that highlight should be lighter than this, so maybe I'd take my charcoal pencil and just... So we've got this range of lights and darks, meaning there's a white and there's a black, and there's a whole bunch of grays between the two, right? Black and white. And they fall into a particular sequence or order up here. So like this might be the whitest, that might be the darkest, and maybe this is right in the middle. Maybe it's not that, maybe it's this. Um, and then I have to try and make sure that I'm also kind of falling in that same order too. Okay, so, um, well, I was saying that not only do you have a light and dark range, a sort of whole, like a, a whole uh, gamut of from white to black, but you also have uh, a range of edges. And so there are places up here where you're gonna see really very precise sharp edges. Like for example, there's this really beautiful sharp edge right there. It probably comes in a little bit more. I'm gonna exaggerate this for right now and I'll probably have to tone it down, but there's a really sharp line where the uh, that shadow meets that plane and that candlestick. And then there are other edges like where this meets, do you see the sugar jar in the background? So the sugar jar meets the white background. It's actually very lost. It's not, it's not so sharp, it's a little bit fuzzier. And so I know this is black and that's white and this is gray and that's also gray, but other places too where you'll just see, you know, like maybe it's the cast shadow back here that's just a little bit softer. I'm gonna mix just a little bit of white in there to help it blend around a little bit. Uh, and also here's another nice contrast. So. Uh, so we have this, right? That, that, that plane goes all the way down in there. Um, and so that's a sharp edge, and then that's a soft edge in the background. And maybe we just need a little bit more lightness and darkness contrast here. This just needs to be a little bit lighter, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so the contrast is this edge and this edge compared to this fuzzy edge. You'll see those all throughout. Like you have to look very carefully as you're looking around at the various contours of these objects. Like it's very sharp up here. Um, it's uh, it's a little softer up here. It's uh, it's most sharp probably on this candlestick holder. Like here's another area here where it's really sharp. It's really sharp back here. And so uh, you want you want to make sure that you find the sharpest edge and the softest edge, and then you want to find out where all those like in between edges are and what sequence and order do they fall into. And then um, once you have that figured out, like, you'll start noticing that there's this really great depth to your drawings. Now, um, I'm just changing the shape of this a little bit. In fact, I need to also probably get this inside plane. There's a shadowy plane that I need to really resolve at some point here. And there's light coming through. Uh, and I'll, I'll fuss with that more, probably in the time-lapse version, so. But that's just the basics of this. Um, it just takes a little time to build them. Pastel can be a very fast medium once you get a little used to it because you can, you can uh, cover a lot of ground pretty quickly because it's so soft. And it also is very luminous because it's like paint in the sense that you're actually putting, this is almost like a light stick, right? Like you're actually putting uh, white on, onto a gray surface, which makes it sort of glow instantly, which is amazing. It's an amazing experience to be able to do that sometimes. sometimes.